Okay, so now let us get on to the next section. Basically, now we are talking about vectors. Okay, so now just I uh, will give you one minute to give me a uh, definition of a vector. Okay, so you just start. What is the definition of a vector? Sir, vector is a physical quantity that the transformation. Is a physical quantity which what kind of transformation? It's a transformation in 3D coordinates. 3D coordinates. So what is transforming? The translational and rotational. Translational and rotational. So you you are saying something which is the, the sentence is not complete, okay? Uh, so there is something there is some something is transforming okay whether so some uh, one of you said that it is a translation and rotation okay but still the sentence is uh, not clear so any other definition of vector you know now so when we transform the coordinate system then the vector the like the values change the when you change the uh, when you rotate the coordinate system uh, what is changing? So you rotate or translate the coordinate system, the value, like the individual values of the, like the unit, the coefficient of the unit vector, they will change. But even if, but the vector remains the same, essentially. Magnitude remains the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other definition? It an element in an n-dimensional vector space. An element in a vector space. Yes, and R with R n. Okay. It transforms into both proper and improper uh, transformations. Okay. Then you have to talk to me what is a proper and improper transformations. Okay. So we will get into those things. Okay. So now. Uh, so before vector we have something else that is scalar right so so yes, yeah sir in the last lecture that you we discuss how to get the delta function from e to the power minus a x squared that we have to discuss in class uh, we will discuss so let us complete something today okay so we will discuss that okay no problem so so delta function that that we will discuss See, certain things I have given you so some of, one of the days we may not be one of the weeks we may not be able to uh, do the uh, what uh, the examination okay so those class we, whatever the problem I am giving every day that we will discuss okay so so let us now at least finish because I have only now 10 minutes so let us finish certain definitions clearly so so what is a scalar a scalar is a quantity which does not change under coordinate rotation okay so it is see if there is a quantity which does not change under the rotation of coordinates okay so then we say that that quantity is a scalar so what is a vector so vector is a quantity which okay so what is the set of quantities not a vector is not single see one vector you know that there are components right so so there are different uh, the dimension of the vector because depends on the number of components of the vector depends on what dimension you are talking about okay so in the three dimension the two dimensional plane you have two components for a vector okay usual uh, cartesian coordinate system so if you go to the three dimension it is three components you can go to 10 dimension you can go to the infinite dimension okay so uh, there are so many physical uh, phenomena happens in infinite dimension so in that infinite dimension you have infinite components of the vectors okay so so now what is a vector so it's a set of quantities which are actually the components of the vector okay transforms exactly the same way the coordinate transforms under coordinate rotation okay so this is a clear definition that is it is a set of quantities which transform exactly the same way the coordinate 
please mute please please mute yourself please okay so it is an uh, the vectors are actually a set of quantities which transforms exactly the same way the coordinate transforms under the uh, rotation of the coordinate system okay so what is a tensor so tensor is a quantity which transforms okay under coordinate transformation not the exact way but the similar fraction okay where how the factor has been done because that i will explain now uh, in detail uh, after a couple of uh, minutes or the next class so the, now the scalar vector tensors are clear so basically uh, there is a coordinate transformation you can actually if you look at the three dimensional coordinate transformation euclidean space uh, you say take the cartesian coordinates x1 x2 x3 you know that you can actually when you rotate in an arbitrary direction you can write it as a 3 by 3 matrix right the rotation can be written as a 3 by 3 matrix i can denote that matrix as r okay for example in the two dimension this coordinate system there is x y okay so i can make a uh, rotation in this two dimensional plane about an angle alpha so you know that this the x y will rotate to something x prime y prime so so, so the x y will go to x prime y prime okay so this transformation you can actually write using a transformation matrix r so any vector in that two dimensional plane okay i can use the same transformation to write down the components of that vectors suppose i have a vector in the old coordinate system which is say xi prime xi and basically xi which goes to xi prime and the 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 coordinate system rotate at an angle alpha so uh, with a uh, matrix which can be represented using a matrix r so we, we can actually explicitly write down those matrix later on so this one uh, you can actually write it as xi prime is equal to rij xj so this is basically the each component so x1 x2 x3 in three dimension or if you go to any higher dimension the index changes to whatever the dimension you are talking about so xj goes to xj prime okay in this fashion so this is the rij so this is basically so there is something we have actually done here there is an index notation and the summation convention we actually applied here so now let us talk about index notation and summation convention because then only you can actually clearly understand these notations so Sir, yeah. Sir, can you please explain the definition of tensor once again? Yeah, I I I will explain. So see, uh, the scalar is a quantity which does not change under coordinate transformation. Vector is a quantity which actually is a set of quantities which uh, transforms exactly the same way the coordinates transform under rotation of the coordinate system. So now the tensor is also a certain quantities which transforms under coordinate rotation. okay the way the vec means the similar fashion the uh, the co not the exact the same way the coordinate transforms okay but the coordinate transformation matrix r will be involved in that okay so that i will explain that because now you have seen that this x prime equal to r x so or you can just write down as the vector x okay i am just know use the notation this this i can write it as r x okay this just uh, x prime is equal to r x okay so from the old coordinate system to the new coordinate uh, system it has gone the vector x gone to x prime okay and the r is the matrix correspond to the coordinate rotation so now if i have a vector the tensor for example t then if you want to represent that you need two r's okay so you use the same rot uh, coordinate rotation uh, matrix to represent to go from t to so what t is a tensor go to t prime that i am going to explain in soon because 
I have to now define in the uh, index notation and the summation convention because otherwise I cannot write down those relations. So now let us look at index. What is the word about transition? Uh, we have only talked about rotation. So uh, the vector transform exactly uh, into transform vector translation also. See, so see what I said now is how do you define a vector? So you have so many kind of transformations. So this is the definition of a vector is this, okay. So how do you define? So I gave you certain quantity. By taking that quantity, how do you know that that quantity is a vector or tensor or a scalar, okay. So now you consider that whatever quantity is given to you, obviously in the three dimension, because if I want to give you a uh, vector, I should give you three components. So if I just give you a one quantity in a three dimension, and I ask you to check whether it is a vector or not. So you cannot, you cannot say anything about that. You cannot even say scalar, okay. So vector you cannot check because you should have at least three components. So the scalar I can check whether under coordinate transformation in that particular system, okay, whether that quantity remains unchanged. For example, the, uh, if you take the, uh, the, the magnitude of a vector, that is a scalar. So you have the coordinate transformation, the magnitude of the vector remains the same. So that quantity is a scalar. Or the mass, if you do the coordinate transformation, so we are not talking about relativistic thing, okay. So non-relativistic concept we are now talking, okay. So when you take a coordinate transformation, the mass of a body does not change under coordinate transformation. So. So this is the way we are defining the vectors. So you have so many kind of, you have translations, you have different kind of transformation. So we are not talking about that. We are talking about the rotation, okay. So rotation is by, of the rotation of the coordinate system, okay. So can I take five more minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so index notation so what is the basic so let me complete the index notation today so we will start from this tomorrow. So you know that you can use the uh, variables i, j, k or any variable available alpha, beta, gamma or anything okay you can use it as an in index, right, so, or indices. So now, there is, suppose there is an expression, okay. In an expression, if one index, either it is i, a, or j, or k, okay, if it is appearing only once, okay, if it is, suppose there is a mathematical equation, so in that equation, each term, because equation can have a different terms. The different terms means the plus or minus sign, that terms, okay. But in a, uh, the, the, so for example, I write an expression. So I'm not writing the index now. I'm just writing an expression. F is equal to A plus B plus C, okay. So this is an equation. So A is a one term, B is another term, C is another term. So A can have the product of different terms. That is not the thing. The summations coming into that expression, these are the different terms in that. So if one index is appearing only once, that means, for example, in the left hand side of this equation, suppose I have i here, then this index this, that is called a free index. So this is a free index here. So if it is appearing in one of the terms in that expression, it has only once, then it has to appear each and every term in that uh, expression. So there should be i here, there should be i here, and there should be i here. Suppose you don't write i here, then this is a wrong. So this expression is wrong. If one free index is appearing one of the terms, that index should appear each and every term in that expression. 
because this is wrong you can clearly see because this is the expression suppose I write this okay what is wrong about physically if you took it because fi is actually represent a vector one index quantity is basically a vector of rank one okay I'll discuss that later so this is a vector this is a vector but this is a scalar so you cannot add vector and scalar so that is basically that understanding okay so if one free index is appearing once in an expression it has to appear each and every term in that equation suppose one index is appearing twice then it is called a dummy index okay so if it is appearing twice it is called dummy index So when it is appearing twice, it means that there is a summation. Suppose I write down x i i. Now you see this expression i is appearing twice. So i is appearing twice means that there is a summation. So that means there is a summation here and summation over that index and summation up to what depends on the dimension you are talking about so one index only single index in an uh, equation there is no summation it is a free index that has to appear in each and every time so this two indices okay it is means that there is a summation so it is a dummy why do you mean by dummy i can actually replace i with j i will get the same answer but if it is a free index i can i should not re replace i with anything else if it's a dummy index i can replace it with any other index any other index provided that the other index you are replacing should not be there in a in that expression as a free index okay so now you tell me suppose one index is appearing thrice in an equation three times what does that, that mean There's not value. that means you are wrong you made some mistake in the calculation okay so if if your expression contains because this is very crucial Tomorrow your answer sheet will have 3, 4, 5 same index appearing. So if I see that more than 2, I don't even look at the calculation you have done. It is wrong. Okay. So 1, it is a free index. 2, it is a dummy index. More than 2, it is wrong. If you are using the sum index notation and summation convention in your calculation. Okay. Otherwise, you can have any number of same thing, any number happening. Okay. So you have to use this index notation and summation convention in our this course basically for the vectors linear vector space okay all this theory what we are going to talk about okay so any sir, question yeah sir, perhaps one index thing represent a vector so it is a it represent tensor now this represent tensor two index okay so if see one index repeating okay that means yes. there is a summation convention so if i have T, I have two index. I can have this T i j. Okay. So th they are not repeating. So T i j, I can suppose in three dimension, I can run from one to three. J can run from one to three. Okay. So how many are there? How many are there in T i j? So nine. 